My baby daddy's boss handed me, I think it was a thousand shillings. Yes, he gave me a thousand shillings and he told me to go to Nairobi. When I get to Nairobi, I call my baby daddy so that we can link up. Him, he was already on his way there. So I called him. His phone was off at first. But I knew I am going to Nairobi. Got into a matatu. Brrr, went to Nairobi. Called him numerous, numerous times on Simuza Jami. You remember Simuza Jami? So I called him numerous times on Simuza Jami and still could not get him. So, unajoili unanza kurega rega tao. Try in every baby half an hour so that you see whether he's finally washed his phone. Finally, I got a hold of him and he said um, he was in Langata. I should go to Langata. I had how much? I think at this point I had, I think I had about a hundred, I think a hundred shillings left. This is at the point of making that call. Mind you, I've not paid for that call. Now, it was just not for how much. I think that one I paid, I think, about 30 bob. So by the time I was done with that phone call, I had about, I had 70 bob left. So I made my way to, to Langata. I met my baby daddy. And we went to where the brother now used to live. Now the brother used to live in an SQ. Um, I don't know if, it's called, that place was called Utiende in Langata, I think. Yeah, Utiende. So, the brother lived in a single room and the conversation that we had that evening, or rather, they had, but it was one room, so I was hearing everything. <laughs> I was hearing everything. The bro was basically trying to tell him, you and her cannot stay here. There's not enough space. Um, and the people who are renting me this place will not appreciate so many people living in this small space. So you all need to bounce. <sighs> Following morning, CCL. We went to a place called Uplands. Now, in Uplands, you know these houses that are next to the train tracks? Zile, the ones for the staff, they are 10 by 10. Now, this house in Uplands, first of all, there was no light, there was no water, and um, toilet facilities were non-existent. Or rather, <laughs> out of order for years. You know, because... Let me not explain. Let's just say, the toilets looked like a heap of shit everywhere. So, every spot... <laughs> The toilet had been shitted on. The whole toilet was full. So basically, there were no facilities. Now, there was Sidri, a relative of theirs who used to live not too far from. Is it a relative or somebody they knew? High Suru. That's where we used to go to the loo. I went to Uplands. Man, that place was cold. We are living in that 10 by 10 room. That 10 by 10 room was at the time occupied by his his sister his brother i think had just finished class eight or something like i think his sister i don't know why his brother was not there was his brother there anyway i remember significantly that the sister was the one that stayed there for the most time so she used to go to school somewhere near there so she lived there basically most of the times alone <laughs> man me i don't even know how she did that because that place was scary anyway kidogo kidogo i got used to living there i mean okay once in a while i would follow him to where he was maybe for a day or two but still come back to uplands so he got a job at a studio in river road and um, <laughs> it was, it was, um, it was, I think, what was his name? Charles Conde. He's, he's, a, he's a Kikuyu gospel singer. Um, 
I will remember one of his songs. Negobo ka dena ma negobo ka Deni wa roho nyobo ke na madhahun Nere toro wadha ga kinya modhi ya Heo madhaku gai kare na muadhani He got a job at this guy's studio. So he left me in uplands and he went to work in River Road. He didn't have a place to stay. So either he would crash with friends every now and then and stuff like that. And then sometimes stay in the studio. Now my relationship with my baby daddy's sister just was <laughs> what? Ah, it was shit. Ah, yeah, 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 that relationship was shit. At first, it, it, we tried to make it nice, but I think the dynamic, you know, first of all, we are almost age mates, sour. So, tunaskumana. Ah, at that time, the bro was still there. The bro later said we went to post or something. But at that time, the bro was still there. So, tulikuwa tunavuru. Ghana to look at Navurugana na uyo sister ya baby daddy. Eh, hey, we used to fight a lot. A lady, one lady in Uplands, there was a friends of theirs from the family. I don't remember her name. But I remember she used to work for Farmer's Choice. And one time she told me, but why why are you enduring this? I don't think your mom can be that bad, I mean. Just go home. And several times. She offered to give me the phone to speak to my mom so that I go home. But I think my fear of having to face my mother and you no know, pregnancies, juinini, it was just not, it wasn't something that I was going to do. I, I just couldn't. And I knew my mom wasn't just. Plus, my mom has tried to kill my baby daddy. Are you getting? Amejaribu kuwa boyfriend yangu. I want nothing to do with her. I mean, <laughs> guy. So, it got frustrating. And I kept complaining to my baby daddy, man, me can't stay here. I may can't stay here. I may can't stay here. Finally, I decided wherever you are is where I am. Jusasa mimi, ni meshindo kukana dada yako. Plus the living conditions where we are living, I, I don't think you even get, it doesn't matter where you're staying, even if it's under a bridge, it can't be that bad. Plus it is Nairobi, at least I see things, I see people, there's things to do. In our plans, the best you can do is follow the train tracks, my friend. Ni kufuata train tracks, unaenda, unangali uko kwenye mefiko uko musho, you know. So just to have, just to pass time. I used to walk down the train tracks. So I'm I went I went now to my baby daddy now. I, I, I went to town. I I got my fare. I went to town. I decided I'm not staying in uplands anymore. So in town I remember at first the, the very first day. He didn't, he didn't, okay, he didn't have a plan A, B, C, D, W, or Z about what we were going to do or where we were going to stay, but here I am now. So he spoke to his boss. The boss decides I am sour. Um, Y'all will sleep here, <laughs> in the studio that is. But he had to lock us in. Okay? So after everybody had cleared from the studio and uh, from the studio and the complex in River Road, uh, one day I'll take a video of that place. Oh my god. He allowed us to now lala ukopa floor. And we slept on the studio floor. We slept in the st on the studio floor for two, I think two or three days. Charles Conde's wife, <laughs> Charles Conde's wife, one time came to visit, and she had a business, by the way, in Meru. Eh? 
So she came down to visit and she had um, her sisters who were living in, um, I think in, you know, this Barabara, what's the name of that road? Kirinyaga Road. So for the time that she was there, she took me with her to Kirinyaga Road so that I don't sleep on the floor. She was also pregnant at the time. So I don't sleep on the floor. So she, at least I got a good meal. You know, every time she was around, I had a good meal. I had a warm place to sleep because then she could not leave me with her sisters. Because even food was a struggle at this point. It was a serious struggle. I can't tell you how many times I ate fries while pregnant. So Charles decided he needed to expand his studio and we needed a place to stay. So what we were going to do, okay, he was going to, so he found a place where there was an extra bedroom for those late night recordings and whatever, whatever. So still on River Road, oh, let's just say a street behind River Road, still in the same vicinity. So he got a new place over there and um, now we had, now we had at least a car room where we could stay. And then we got a stove and two sufurias. But still pesa ya mafuta na pesa ya chakula was a struggle. It was a struggle. These two sufurias were one. Yeah, you use sufuria, I think, ilikuwa tu inatumika kupika chai. Na iyo chai ilikuwa inakuja kupikuwa na wale watu wamekuja studio. Most times we also didn't have shit to make our own stuff. So from the padding that had been put on the wall for soundproofing, you know those cushions, those soft cushions, that padding is what we now were putting on the floor and sleeping. Trust me, I thought that was heaven. That was better than where we were. For a long time, we, we lived there. And he worked during the day, sometimes through the night. But we were always there. You know, there was always the pregnant girl who was waddling around that studio. There was a lady who used to sell food in the same building. Remember she was Kamba. I can't remember her name. Because I had bought there I had bought food there one or two times. And then I started taking food on credit. And then she realized that I have no ways of paying for this food. I am just asking for food. So she got to a point where when food is left over, she'd call me for a plate. And we survived like that. Kidogo kidogo. That was not gonna be it it, it it's time it that became a bit wavering at some point. So we made we made friends with some guys at Kenchik. One guy in particular, I remember, told us, you know what? When you come here, because he realized we were coming in for fries, you know, so many times, so many times. So this guy decided, he told us one time, you guys be coming around closing time. I think their closing time was around 10. You be coming around closing time, and then, I will be packing for you what's extra. You know those leftover mabajias and stuff like that. So that's how we basically survived. <laughs> we all used to walk from River Road, Usiku, at around 9. We go all the way to Moy Avenue, that Kenchik. We had mastered the art of... of uh, I mean, not mastered the art. We had, we had transversed Tao proper. We knew where chips was cheap so that we can afford to eat. Mind you, nile wakati chips zilikuwa zinatoka si 30 bob. Sawa. But still we couldn't afford it.